A gym owner claims that the average adult male has a waist measurement equal to 36 inches. A study of 42 males showed the average waist size to be 35.9 inches and a standard deviation of 3.33 inches. At the 2% significance level, test the gym owner's claim. Give the practical interpretation of the outcome of the test. Okay, so we have this phrase here, test the gym owner's claim. Test the claim. That tells us it's a hypothesis test, and at that point we need to express the claim symbolically. Okay, so let's start out with that. Our first step, step one, is to express the claim. Okay, so the gym owner claims what exactly? It says the gym owner claims that the average adult male has a waist measurement equal to 36 inches. So if that's saying that the average adult male, that means the average waist measurement is equal to 36. So we're going to say the mean is equal 36. All right. Once we have the claim, we want to go to HO and HA to get our competing pair of hypotheses. Okay, so if your claim has an equal sign in it, it's the same as HO. So remember, anytime your claim has an equal sign, it is HO. Okay, so that's HO in this case. Then HA must be the complement of that. So the opposite of equal to is, of course, not equal to. All right, let's go to step three then. We have our competing pair of hypotheses, we have our claim, now it's time to get our data. So we wanna record our data. Okay, so the data here for hypothesis tests about the mean is usually n, x bar, a standard deviation, and a significance level alpha. Okay, so it says a study of 42 males, so n is 42, show the average waist size to be 35.9. So the average was 35.9. And a standard deviation of 3.33. The significance level alpha, it says at the 2% significance level, so that's 2%, or in other words, 0 0.02. Okay, now at this point, we have our data, we wanna form our test statistics, step four, our test stat. Okay, so for your test stat, if the sample size is large and it's a test about the mean, you're going to use z equals to x bar minus mu sub zero sigma divided by the square root of n. Okay, for us, that's gonna work out to be x bar 35.9 minus mu sub zero. Remember this number comes all the way from HO. The same symbol here and here indicate that we use that number. That'll be 36. The standard deviation is 3.33. Remember, we're using s as a substitute for sigma, as long as the sample size is large. And the square root of n, 42. Okay, so there is our expression. Now, work that out on our calculator. We're going to have uh, 35.9 minus 36. Of course, that's a difference of minus 0.1. I'm putting it all on the calculator, though, at once, just to allow you to see how that's done. 3.33 divided by the square root of 42. Close it all up, hit enter, and we get minus 0.19. Minus 0.19. Okay, that's not a very extreme test stat, right? It's very close to zero. Um, it'll be uh, certainly a test stat that's not going to allow us to reject HO. But just to confirm that, we want to go ahead and do the critical value step, right? So step five, the critical value. Okay, so we draw our bell curve. We look at HA and determine based on that symbol whether it's left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. Remember, less than means left-tailed, Greater than means right-tailed, not equal means two-tails. Okay, now, what we're trying to figure out is these critical values. Where do these regions begin here, these shaded regions? That's what we're trying to figure out. Of course, the one on the left will be negative, so I'm putting my negative sign in there. The one on the right would be positive. Remember, if your test stat lands here, you reject HO. If it lands here, you reject HO. But if it lands here in the middle, you're going to say, do not reject 
HL. Do not project HL. Okay, so our goal is to figure out these critical values. The way we do that is we look up alpha on our T table. Now in this case, because it's a two-tailed test, we're going to look up alpha divided by two. So look up alpha divided by two, since there are two tails, and alpha is gonna be split into two parts then. So look up alpha divided by two under the infinity row, right? Remember, the infinity row is the only place on the T table where we have critical Z values. So we're gonna look up 0.02 divided by two, so in other words, 0 0.01, we're gonna look up in, uh, under the infinity symbol, sorry, and that will give us our critical Z values. Okay, so let's go to the table and do that now. So we're looking at the, the 0.01 column, and then we're gonna go straight down to the bottom where we see the infinity sign. Okay, so the answer turns out to be 2.326. Okay, so our table value was 2.326 and negative 2.326. So our critical values are actually plus and minus 2.326. Remember that we have two of them because we have a two-tailed test. Basically, it's one number with two different signs, plus and minus, because the two different sides of the curve. Okay, now we do our step six. Our step six is to form the initial conclusion, right? Initial conclusion. So our initial conclusion is going to be based on where our test stat lands on the curve above along the number line, right? Now this number, minus 0.19, is very, very close to zero, a little bit on the left of zero, basically, right? So it's around here, and that's clearly in the do not reject HO area. So we're going to say do not reject HO. That leads to the idea that we are not going to support so do not support HA. Remember, these go hand in hand. If you don't reject, you don't support. All right, now, what we're going to have to ask ourselves is, to get our final, final step, the last step of the problem, the final conclusion, we have to ask ourselves, which wording are we going to use? Are we going to say that we do not reject the claim, or are we going to say we do not support the claim? That all depends on which one our claim is. Is it HO or HA? Well, looking back here, we saw that our claim was the same as HO, so this time we're going to use the wording, do not reject the claim, right? So we're gonna say the sample data, sample data does not allow us to reject, reject the claim. In this case, it does not allow us to reject the claim that the average waist size is equal to 36. So when it says give the practical interpretation of the outcome of the test, basically what we're saying is that based on this data, we cannot refute the gym owner's claim. The gym owner claims that the, the waist measurement for the average adult is 36 inches, and this data does not refute that. Of course, it makes sense because look at our X bar. It's so close to 36, right? So at this point, uh, it makes sense that we're not rejecting the gym owner's claim. We're saying this data does not allow that to happen. So we're basically saying that this data makes him appear to be correct.